Hello, Bloodstains. Good week this week. How have you been, Alistair? Oh, we're all right. Yeah, it's been an interesting week for Bloodstains. No, I don't think so. I think it's been quite boring. Oh. I think it's been a boring week. I think, meh. Same well, old, same that's... old. I'm just going to be down as a day. <coughs> the recaps would just be boring if we just agreed all the time, so it's all good. <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> Let's get down to business. I was on first. I was pretty happy with this game. I, I predicted 4 1, and I didn't manage to get 4, and Barry didn't manage to get 1, so yeah. Lose lose for both of us. Um, oh, wow. I was looking to continue their run, while Freddy's Nightmares were looking to get to the top of the midfield pack. Nightmares took Cheney, Satek, Wizard, and a Babe, and due to some indecision, they didn't actually take all of their inducements. They did have enough for a Halfly Master Chef if they didn't. Uh, Take one of these star players, but they didn't take. But they, it was 150k to win the bank. And Necro chose to attack with a successful first turn, making the ball safe and KOing a line elf. But, you know, I'm like with Elzonia. Make that hole, yes. make that hole with my strength up player, rush through. I have Zidane basing a goal. Zidane is blitzed away, uh, but it's not knocked down. And this proves fatal because when Barry tries to make a throw play with his ghoul, he has to dodge through Zidane's tackle zones. And he falls down, failing those one in nine chances. So, yeah, the ball is down. The elves manage to steal and make it 1 0 on turn two, which is a great start for me. <laughs> Second time round, ball is kicked near. Uh, the nightmares get another KO on the on the drive on the first time of their drive. Elves apply pressure to a cage. The nightmares move downfield and KO yet another elf. So losing a lot of elves. Elves get one die on the ball carrier and reroll a uh, but, but reroll push into a pal, and the ball is then stolen. Um, then try to punt it upfield. Player I have been catching snake eyes is the catch. Not happy. Uh, but Cheney and Wolfman are both based by Shadowers, so they're but they're they their werewolves are out of action for this next turn. Um, elves get some clever chain pushes to get themselves an easy tackle, an easy pick up, which they yet again fail, snake eyes in the pick up roll. So despite me, a lot despite getting some luck, I'm not getting as much as I would hope I need. Um, Necro, but Necro gets the ball but fails to do some passing play to get the ball safe. The scrum continues for a couple more turns, but then it's handed off to Morientes, who but who beelines it for the end zone and decides to score on turn seven because if I score to because I've got so many players KO'd, I want to give them two chances to get back. Uh, so I score a touchdown on turn seven. Bash Fest for turn 8, um, his um, ghoul is injured, making a go for it. And of course, since he is Necro, he doesn't have an Apothecary, he only has um, a Necromancer, which doesn't really help ghouls. Um, I managed to steal the ball, make a little bit of a pass play, 2-0 at half time. To my displeasure, <laughs> my three KOs remain on the bench. Which is a net one player disadvantage as the second half starts. The kick is near and the, the uh, nightmares get a blitz. So, despite me doing well in the first half, I'm not getting some, get a bit unlucky this second half. Drive ends up being quite a scrum though. Um, uh, Satek shows his worth by using strip ball to make the ball impossible to get free and safe. But the Avels eventually managed to get the ball free after one knockout each way. Cesar runs relatively unmolested to make it 3 0 on turn 15. Crawley, all the KOs come back on both teams. So the last turn's a bit of a bash, but the Elves get a blitz to apply some pressure, but it results in naught in the end. Nice and quick that one. 3 0. Quite happy with that. No, yeah, yeah. I've, I've already had a look at my dice. Uh, and I'm not happy. It could have easily been four. 
But yeah, <laughs> lots of ball possession by the as requested, which is a bit of a surprise we see with most teams. But as you can see, the result speaks for itself. Two passing plays, two successful catches. If we're looking at statistics, um, but yeah, luckily for both of us, no injuries either way that are seriously uh, mm. bad. I know mean, this is to be expected. I think for Barry's team, he mm. took a lot of casualties early on, and he has actually in the last couple of games pulled it out and done pretty well and exceeded expectations but he was going to hit a roadblock like this it may it may happen again yeah but, but i don't think he, he he can complain too much getting uh beaten by your pro worlds yeah. uh, and it was a pretty good result for him really like you say no real injuries yeah let's look at the dice rolls uh that's a lot of ones i've rolled there's a lot of ones i've rolled um uh, but oh, yeah I suspect quite a lot of them were in shadowing though, and in um, there was only maybe like six or seven, isn't it? six or seven that could have been in a, in actual ag in actual agedice like throws and pickups and catches, which is still a lot for that, but it's, it doesn't matter too much. And then the block uh, dice, uh, the, the block 100 dice, hundred percent injury rolls, hundred percent injury rolls. Which sorry, uh, this means I wasn't, sorry, yeah. that means I just wasn't injured. Um, oh, okay. It's still good. If we look on the other side, I did get lucky on the power, on the bashes, though. Considering this game ended up being quite a bit of a scrum, I did get a bit lucky on that. Um, if we look on Barry's side, um, much less uh, much less dice rolls made, because, you know, they're more of a bashing team, so they're not going to do lots of dodges. Um, yeah, nothing too surprising there. A little bit high on the ones, but again... You do shift slightly towards the ones because you don't re-roll a success, but you do re-roll a fail. Uh, yeah. If we look at the block, di block dice, that's a lot of dice being rolled, isn't it? Ah, uh, sorry, I hit the wrong one. That is a lot of yeah, dice being rolled. Yeah, yeah. Uh, a lot of skulls on both downs. That's, I'll quick look at the spread. It's exactly... It's a. It's. That's pretty much what you should be expecting on the spread. 27 is slightly above standard deviation, but really it's is within what you expect. Everything that was in what you expect. I don't think he has a lot of block, though, so it's... Mm. So it's cruel, it's yeah. cruel, but it's within what you expect. But when he gets the when he gets those skills, lots of block... Yeah, he's, his spread, the 47 push has mitigated it. It spreads all right, yeah. Mm. Um, so let's look at the SPP. Five for Solomon Grundy. Uh, that's about it. That's a lot of SPP I've got. Uh, that is. Yeah. Uh, you got uh, Elf SPP. Elf SPP there, but that's actually quite <laughs> low for normal, for most considering my recent games. That's only sixteen. I yeah, say only sixteen, numbers. but rookie numbers. Rookie, rookie numbers. numbers. <laughs> <laughs> I think I said like twenty-one was bad, or didn't I? Oh dear. <laughs> uh, so yeah, that's some solid SPP. Uh, so let's check the. I don't actually get any level ups. I think I might have, but I don't think I did. I'll have a quick once over the t t t t team. Maybe you might have a couple close or whatever. I don't think I did get any level ups. Um, yeah, you look about where you were. No, um, no, nobody really close. But this game was played a while. But I get the game was played a while ago, so I might have had a look at my team beforehand, not realised. Uh, so, uh, no, you look, yeah. Good star player point spread, by the way. That's, yeah. Mm. Uh, Solomon Grundy doesn't get a level up. Um, so, no level up for this he, game. Has he bought anybody? Has doesn't look like anybody? it. Um, no, he's only got 60k. Okay, yeah, yeah. Oh, he might, may have bought a reroll at some point anyway. Yeah. I think he had three rerolls for this game, so I don't think so. Um, so, yeah, that's how that match went. So Alistair, tell me, uh, Snobbity Snobs versus the Leviathans. Right, well, the first thing I've got to say, uh, it's not really their fault, but one of the, the, their teams look similar. One is a slightly lighter blue than the other, so that made it interesting to watch a little bit. Like, hold on, I thought you were on the other side. No, okay, whatever. So, <clears throat> Willem's receiving, and on his first turn, on his, his second hit, is a one dice block on a player without block and he rolls a skull and then he re-rolls the skull 
and then it's a turnover. He does a, a similar thing again later, but I'm not going to uh, give him any grief. By the end of that game, he he seems to have got it now. You know, it's far too risky. I mean, you you, you do them like you did in your last game because you wanted to get the ball carrier down. That's that's acceptable. Uh, but yeah, I think he, it's, it's one of those things, isn't it? Sometimes you got to learn it by actually playing the game. So, mm. but that that did it. That didn't do him any favors on the first half. Chris, because of that, Chris is able to come down through a flank and starts to threaten the ball carrier. Uh, can't quite get right in there, so Willem's able to get the ball and he starts running it up a uh, flank. Chris is able to get in and blitz the ball carrier. So there's another thing about set up, Willem, because you set up all your elves along the line they're all in tackle zones. It's much harder to move them out. So I do recommend you look at how some of the more experienced coaches are setting up where they set players further back. And there's a reason we put line men on the front and keep the rest of the team back. It's it, it, I, I, I know you were on attack and you were thinking maybe I can get those blocks in, but you, you yeah, it, it's not always the best setup to do. But um, Perfect defense and blitz can screw you over there. It can. And uh, I thought, again... There are exceptions to that. Uh, Chris blitzes into the ball carrier, gets him uh, down the field. He uh, attempts to pass it, but it's an inaccurate pass, so it turns over, but it's quite deep into Willem's half this at the moment. Uh, Willem does fail to pick it up. Then Chris, I can't remember, I think he either fails to pick up the ball or he fails to dodge, but either way, it's a turnover with the ball lying on the pitch. Willem's able to... To, to get an up, get up a player, he manages to pick up the ball in a tackle zone. He's starting to see that Chris is going for the ball in one uh, tackle zone, and it's a three plus, and it's not as risky as you might think it is. So he, he manages to jump in, grab the ball, jump out. He he, he then goes for a, a fairly, I think it was a uh, sorry, quick short pass. As a short pass uh, over. A couple of Chris's plays, but he didn't really have a choice. But they fail the intercept. He, he manages to catch the ball, and he manages to run it all the way back up the other end of the uh, pitch. So in Chris's turn, he's able to sort of he's not able to get the ball carrier down, but he's able to get some plays around him and uh, get some tackle zones onto him. And then um, uh, Willem in order to alleviate the situation, attempts to lightning bolt one of the players and the lightning bolt fails. He rolls a one. I, hate, <laughs> I absolutely hate lightning bolt because it always seems to fail more than it succeeds. I, I, I'm the opposite. I, I, I hate fireball, which never works for me. But, you know, it, it, it is, isn't it? It's what experiences you have with it. But uh, it was a good move by Willem. If it had pulled off, it really would have helped him. Um, so yeah, I th Chris is able then to um, get the ball carrier goes down, uh, but then Chris fails to pick up the ball. <laughs> You're going to see a lot of that. Uh, Willem picks it up uh, in two tackle zones, so uh, and then runs it right up to uh, the end zone, but not quite to score. Uh, Chris goes to hit the ball carrier, fails to go for it. Uh, but he's able. To, he's already marked the ball carrier. Willem dodges, fails to dodge, but re-rolls it, and he scores. So in the second half, uh, yeah, that's the first half. In the second half, by this point, Willem's down three KO'd players. Oh, so yeah. he, he is down players by this point. Uh, it's a pretty deep kick. I think it's all the way up in, actually, into Chris's end zone. Uh Chris does run down the flank and tries to get deep into Willem's half, but he didn't. He fails to pick up in the end zone. I think he re-rolled that, got it, and then it was an inaccurate throw <laughs> to someone a bit further down. Uh, but but the ball's so far away from everybody, it's reasonably safe. Uh, Willem's marked a would-be receiver, and he's starting to fill in the gaps onto his flank. You know, so he, he is trying to uh, mitigate that a bit. Um, Chris blitz. Oh, he's marked the ball carrier, so he also runs through and marks the ball carrier. Chris is able to blitz away the mark from the ball carrier, and he just throws the ball <laughs> right over the half, catches it, and then scores. 
uh, because Willem's not able, even though he's trying to mitigate what Chris is doing, he's not really able to mark absolutely everybody. Mm. Um, so then, uh, throws, uh, uh, yeah, so that it goes to another kickoff, and it's a blitz. That's what they're. So it's a blitz. Chris runs down now. He's not, you know, high elves have a couple of fast players, but they're not all really fast. He's able to get as far as uh, I think he does actually get one under the where the ball's going to land. No, he gets it on top of where the ball's going to land. The ball lands and he catches it with diving tackle. You mean diving catch? So got, diving catch, sorry. So he's caught it with diving catch. Willem is able to then get in and mark the ball carrier but the blitz doesn't do anything. Uh, so Chris is able to dodge out and he starts hammering it down uh, towards the end. Uh, but he, he's not quite in a position where he can score, but Willem gets a two dice blitz on the ball carrier and the ball carrier goes down. <laughs> an awful lot of backwards forwarding in the game. Uh, Chris uh, then is able to blitz away a, a mark away from the ball and he picks it up and he does. I did that when he scored. Sorry, guys, my notes are going to be funny. But yeah, I mean, there's an awful lot of uh, backwards and forwarding. The ball gets uh, knocked loose and they're, they're, they're picking it up and then dropping it again. <laughs> and uh, Chris, I've got to, yeah, sorry, guys, my notes have gone. But yeah, Chris does get basically come out on the best of that and, and scores the second touchdown. I mean, there, there was no real. Uh, big plays there, so so yeah, it was a very healthy game. Uh, I love throwing the ball around. Uh, oh, that was it. That's where I've got confused because of so Willem. After the uh, second Chris's third touchdown, uh, he set up all these guys along the line again. He's picked the ball up at one end of the pitch. Oh, this is how Chris got... Oh, sorry, this is how you got your third touchdown, Chris. I do apologise. Sorry, it was one of those plays that was difficult to note down. So, Willem's picked up the ball on one flank, and he actually throws it across the length of the pitch to the other side when he didn't need to, you know? And he fails. I think the, 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 the pass succeeds, but the catch fails, ironically enough. And all I was going to say on that is, again, you know, you, you, you could have sort of protected the ball carrier a bit and wait for a more opportune moment to pass. But it's not a massive criticism. It's just the way it went because the, the ball failed and then Chris manages to pick it up and he just is able to get it uh, down. And that's how he scores his third touchdown. So, um, yeah, but yeah, very healthy game. So if we look at the stats. Ball possession, the Leviathans seem to have more of it. They have some yes. passes. Uh, but less yards around, which means realistically, that, yeah, they had the ball more, but it's like they didn't have, they weren't able to utilize it as much. Um, uh, uh, there, there, there is a thing where the snobs are a little bit more leveled up with, with yeah, of uh, course, skill, the, the snobs skill, a little that don't suck away rerolls, you know. A little more leveled <laughs> up, you mean they are the highest TV team we have in the <laughs> league right. so far. Um, yeah. Yeah, nothing nothing too unsurprising though. Obviously the team with less reroll, well the team with less stats is going to sustain more blocks. But 8 KOs, that's quite a lot. That's quite a lot for Armour Value 8. Yeah, oh, I've been to mention that as well. So yeah, by the second half Willem had a lot of players off the pitch. Mm. Uh, let's yeah. look at those dice rolls then. Uh, let's have a look. So the Leviathans, D6s. That's a lot of fours. Uh, that's a lot of fours. Uh, fours. I think he's got quite. He's done quite well with his dice rolls there, actually. Yeah. Um, he's yeah. rolled a lot of dice, though. You can see that a lot of dice been rolled. And his block dice... Uh, that is a lot of skulls, but there's also a lot of powers relative to pushes. So yes, yeah. Uh, your dice yeah. are equally unlucky as well as lucky there. Um, there, there isn't four pages of block dice yeah, The distribution, no, the distribution not so right. Hmm. Like Chris. Chris, that's a lot of ones. That is an unfair amount of ones. Um, <laughs> but again, you only yeah, roll. You, you, failed. 
You're only Sorry, roll failures. First ever leap. <laughs> first leap attempt, and he fails it. Ha! <laughs> it's a two plus leap from as well because he is um edge five, isn't he? Yeah. Anyway, and the Sorry. block dice. Um, not many. Oh, that's quite lucky actually. Lots of attacker stu uh, uh, defender stumbles and defender downs relative to pushes. Yeah, and the Leviathans don't quite have a lot of dodge on their team, and that's not down to Willem. That's just, you know, you can't get them until they level up. So, you know. mm. Yeah, block before dodge anyway mo on most players, except maybe the catchers, but, you know. Um, yeah, so, good win for the snobs, you would say. Uh, yeah. Puts yeah, them right where they should be, I think. I think Will have also had a reasonable game again as a mm. as a new team coming into the league and like say facing the highest TV team there. I mean he he didn't lose any players of any consequence or anything like mm. that, and he he got a touchdown in. You know it's all good. Chris was pulling shenanigans on Facebook the moment the game was over, despite <laughs> despite being the winning team, he is complaining about the blitzer with a strength up. And the nerves are still catcher. Actually, no, he was complaining about the nerves are still catcher, not even paying attention to the fact that the Blitz has got a strength up, wasn't he? Yeah, you know, it's, I just let him moan. You know, good call. Good. good call with nerves are still, I think, and obviously you take the strength yeah. up. So nothing untoward there. Good call. Uh, don't think there's any other skills you would take yeah, with a double. Oh, sorry, we're onto the team, so I didn't yeah. know. That. Leviathans would take a. Would, would you take anything else if you're on a double on a catcher than nerves are still? No, you wouldn't know still. Yeah, it's good call. Cool. And I suspect the snobby snobs have not gained anything. But I don't remember facing Diving Catch when I played against Chris. I don't remember facing that. <laughs> I think he said we missed a skill up and that could have been the skill up that we missed. Mm. Yeah, that is but. quite a good choice in skill wise. But again, yeah. yeah, that's good for blitzing. Um... Anyone else? Let's look at this SVP. I'm gonna see anyone else. Got a level up. Oh, Chris, name your players. This is so confusing. Yeah, Sundial Elridel and Sundial Ellen here. Oh boy. <laughs> uh, so anything else? Sundial Elnadil. Where are you? Ah, uh, El number five. Number five. He's got eight SPP. Is that enough for a level up? Yeah, I think Diving Catch must have been his level up then. That's probably why. Oh, no, because you said oh, Diving yeah. Catch. Use the game, yeah. Uh, no idea. Pro Chris, name your players. Then you get better. Then we'll, then we'll note down who got the level ups better. <laughs> All right, then. Let's go on to match, uh, match three, I think. Yeah. We've got Commissioner Gibbs, Barmy Army versus Dude, Where's My Comedian? Um, if we're looking at that, the result is as expected, but the game was not. Right. <laughs> uh, Ken took Ken took the croc, croc with guard and two babes and an apothecary and a wizard for his inducements. That's a lot of inducements because you know Gibbs' team Gibbs Army is a great team, and Ken is down TV. Ken's on the attack, burns a reroll on the line of scrimmage and fails to pick up the ball. You'll never guess who burnt the reroll. Uh, Phil plays him as a normal basher and foul style, uh, but Ken kills a dwarf. This is a poth. Ken makes the ball safe. Ken Phil applies pressure. Ken shifts to the right hand side because his left choice to deal with. Ken makes a hole and runs through. He's in scoring position now, but knocks down. Uh, but he fail But Phil knocks down the skink in scoring position. Uh, Ken wizards some some chorfs. Uh, debasing one of his sauruses so he's able to clear tackle zones on the now open ball. He then picks the ball up and delays again. I am absolutely livid here. I'm absolutely livid here. Because Phil's continues his regularly scheduled bash fest, uh, injures the ball carrier and makes the ball safe because a couple of lucky bounces means that Phil has got the ball in the ball centaur's hands. Uh, Ken has no real immediate reply, the balls make the ball safe, and the Chorf score at the end of the half, but get a little bit of luck at the end as the Croc finally does um, some good stuff, knocking down the ball centre with the ball, but the ball centre then gets up, dodges, 
picks up the ball, dodges out, makes a go for it, then throws to a gobble into the end zone. All without a reroll. So there's a lot of four pluses there. Yeah. At half time, two skinks injured, a third is dead, and the injured uh, the injured war means that the sides are now level because one of the dwarfs is also injured. Uh, ball is kicked near. Phil has a successful early bash game. Lizards stand up, ready to be knocked down again. Phil punches on down the left, keeps winning the scrum in the middle, and takes uh, takes an injury from the croc. Ken tries bashing the ball carrier, uh, ball carrying centre with one Saurus. He's tried this a few times, and it's not worked. Ball carrier blitzes down the Saurus and moves safely back to the centre. Uh, Ken can't apply the pressure, so Phil moves back down the left, but this time a bit more backup. Ken defends deep and bases the ball carrier again with only one player. Never the same, same shit, different day. Results the same, but this time the ball centaur is attacked. This time the other ball centaur that isn't ball carrying blitzes down the Saurus, leaving the ball carrying Saurus to move upfield. Rinse and repeat for a couple more turns, uh, and then Phil scores when he wants to score. Ken is up players because, funny enough, he didn't get any more injuries, but Phil did get an injury. But there's no chance to win because he's downtime. To add insult to injury, there's a riot, which means Ken has two turns to score two touchdowns. Ken burns his final reroll with guess who, the croc, and Phil just ignores the ball and decides to play his standard bash game. 2 0, full, full, full time result. Ken had chances, Ken didn't take chances. That is why Ken lost. It could have okay. easily been one or at full time. On a different day, it would have been. I am not happy with Ken's performance. <laughs> and you, can have, you can have a go at me later. Let's look at That's statistics. Cool. Um, ball possession. Obviously, the Barmy Army is going to have more ball possession because they dominate the ball. Um, you always expect that in a, in a field game because he likes to stall as well. Mm. There's a lot of that going on, you know. Uh, yeah. Two, two injuries inflicted by the Chameleons and the Barmy Army inflicted three. One killing and killed a skink as well. A hundred running yards. Beautiful. <laughs> um, if we're looking at anything else, nothing else surprising. Um, let's close dice rolls. Uh, the dice are about where you expect. A little bit low on the ones for Ken, but that's kind of what you uh, expect. Those yeah. dice are about where you're expecting. Actually, no, it's also quite low on sixes. So, those ones and sixes are low. The exact opposite of was it me or was it you? Someone rolled high ones and high sixes. Um, if we look at the punch die, the power dice though, not many powers, not many attacker down, not many defender stumbles. No, no, he was, wasn't getting the players mm. down. And of course, he's playing chorves. Blocks are doing bugger all. It's not happy. Not, not, not gonna be happy. He's not. He, he, the thing is, he had the. He played very well, apart from he delayed when he should have delayed, and he got punished for it twice. Oh. Yeah, it, it it's a bit of a fine art stalling and delaying and all of that. It, it, it is, and you've you've got to find the balance. I mean, I watch games where people have mistimed it that way, and then they're, now they're immediately scoring, and you're going, you could have stalled that. <laughs> you know, it, it's a fine art. And then we look at Phil's dice. Um, not many twos, not many ones, not many threes. Lots of four, fives, and sixes, which is yeah, pretty good. Yeah, but I don't well, think. That's a lot of injury dice, because obviously yeah, that's roll, where those dice are coming. Roll more sixes than anything else. <laughs> mm -hmm. Of course, Phil, but there's lots of sixes. Uh, looking at those block dice. Uh, a bit more even. A bit more even, a bit more even. Again, uh, you could say that those nine, those skulls are slightly out of standard deviation, but it's all within margin of error, I think. Yeah, he rolled one double skull mm. right at the end. Mm. Let's look at the SPP. Um, Ken get a bit of SPP, 9 SPP. It's Obviously, that could have been 12 SPP, Kenneth. <laughs> uh, I'm not going to let it go. <laughs> I'm not going to let it go. I'm not going to let that go. 
You could get into the final and he'll still be reminding you of this, just so you know. <laughs> uh, so, if we look at that, that's um, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 18 SPP. That's more than I got, I'm pretty sure. Barry yeah. got more, so Phil got more SPP than I did. Uh, I don't think there's any level ups because you know how high TV his team is. Um, well, I think on Ken's team... Yeah, uh, that might be level up. It, it'll save you a bit of... Well, we'll have a look at Leon's as well, but the one thing that's similar across both these... So he's now... I thought he bought his Crocs. He hasn't bought his Crocs. So he just needs to get his Crocs in then. Hmm. I'm trying to find but, his I, I would advise, Ken, that you don't replace the dead skin now. You're 80k, uh, you're not too far away from getting the Crocs. Mm. Get that Croc. Uh, you, yeah, just just get him in. You've got your Apo, you've got oh, your, uh, your final re-rolls, you want your, you want to get your Croc and you want to get level ups on your play on your on your big on your sources. And yeah, and for the sources, once they have block, you are gonna to want to develop them differently. The one with the niggle. After he gets blocked, give him break tackle is my advice, because you want him to be manoeuvrable. You don't want him being the one that stands on the line taking hits all the time because of the niggle. But anyway, we can probably get to that when, it when and if it becomes relevant. And then let's have a look at Phil's team, which is going to oh, be Phil's team, of course. scary as always. Yeah. But, he's uh, but that is, if you're playing Phil next, oh, you're a little bit happy to see that. You're a little bit happy to see what you're seeing. Oh, where is he? There he is. Mm. So there's two injured chorf, uh, chorfs. Yes. Which means <laughs> that... uh, who's playing Phil? Matt is very happy to see that, I think. Uh, one of the favourite, two of the favourites going to be going at each other next week, so I think it's going to be very interesting uh, to, especially if this could be the week that one of these teams gets annihilated. Actually, at the moment, uh, Matt's one of the favourite position is a little bit shaky at the moment. We'll probably get to that later, and that's not a, a, a diss on him as, as a player, but looking at the result he got this week, and he's catching up trying to get that beast again. But it's Matt. He could st still pull it out by the end. I mean, he's mm. not down. He's never down and out. <laughs> you don't. Anyway, speaking anyway. of Matt, the Fridge Raiders versus the Lizards. My notes are very quick. My notes are very quick on this match. Oh, right, it's a one one draw draw. <laughs> one one draw. Uh, Leon, and the wiz Leon takes a wizard and chef for this match. Leon steals one reroll in the first half. Matt is on the attack with a successful first turn. Leon bases uh, skink and the ball goes. Uh, Leon bases the ball carry with a skink and the ball goes uh, to Matt's right hand side in somewhat safety. Pressure is applied, Matt, but Matt gets the uh, ball. Uh, gets a surf, and then after the surf, he then decides to find a safe place for his ball carrier. Uh, Leon tries to make make a hole, but foul appearance present, uh, prevents this. Uh, so he just bolts the ball carrier. Probably out of frustration, but you know, ball carrier is down. Uh, the spool is still relatively safe though, but the skinks managed to get two tackle zones on it. Uh, Matt seems to make a hole before actually trying to pick up the ball. Leon loses a turn quickly thanks to a croc being a croc. Matt gets the ball safe and all of Leon's players are out of position or stunned. So Matt manages to coast to a 1-0 lead. Second half, Leon steals two re-rolls. Leon protects the ball. Um, a good start on this bash game, but doesn't pick up the ball. Matt makes a solid defence, but it's too passive for my taste, to be honest. Uh, Matt... Matt, uh, then Leon manages to continue could, could bash game, but yet again fails to pick up the ball. Matt brings a guy near to the ball, but failing the GFIs, uh, and she, failing two GFIs to pick the pick up to get to tackle zones on the ball. Uh, Leon finally picks up the ball, but he admitted to me that he picked up with the wrong player, because that player is then blitzed down uh, with a wrestling goat. Yet more fail. Uh, yet Matt two makes much more fails. Uh, fails to bring much more to the game. Leon manages to pick up the ball better this time and then gets it safe, hands it off and moves it upfield. He decides to score because there's a chance that he can go for the win. Because Matt is down quite a few players. Matt gets two KOs back. Um, it looks like Matt's going to go for the win. But then fails a handoff. 
Leon fails to capitalise, burning his last re-roll. Matt hasn't. They've no players have any re-rolls. Um, Matt manages to get the ball back, moves out field. Leon plays a decent enough defence, which is good enough to prevent Matt from scoring. I think this game was more down to Leon playing okay in a bad situation than to Matt getting. I think Matt played played his game right. He just didn't get the injuries he needed to take full advantage. So the yeah, game ended one 0 Well, come on, one all. Um, so yeah, Leon played well. Matt played good enough. I don't really think. Um, I don't, I think both actually will be happy with the draw because I don't really think Matt got the powers that he needed. I don't think I have a feeling the dice rolls are going to be against Matt. But the no, I imagine Leon's more than happy with the draw on this game. I mean, he's got three draws against three of the three of the. Better teams, and then he loses yeah. to Ken. What's going bodes on? Well, well, but it bodes well for his future with this lizard team. And this we'll team, look at, when we look at his team, they, they, they if, he, if he can keep this up by the next season, they're going to be one of the favourites. They're going to be really mm. tough to stop. But yeah, so let's look at statistics. Uh, more possession for the lizards, six percent, and it's it all in the opponent's half. Love it when that happens. I love it when it happens. <laughs> uh, Forgotten free traders getting decent ball possession. As you can see, if you work the maths out, the ball spent most of its time on the floor. Yeah. Really low. Uh, the blocks are about even. Um, we're not talking yeah. chorf numbers here, but they're uh, but the blocks are still quite high. Three KOs inflicted by the lizards, five inflicted by the fridge raiders, most of them probably towards skinks, I suspect. Um nothing on toward here. Uh let's go to the dice rolls. Lizards. Uh, for once, Leon's actually got decent dice. Not amazing, but Quite he'd be happy bad. with those at least. Um, yeah, not bad dice rolls. Power appearance uh, is about what you're expecting. Failing so on just, the... just, Sorry, just out of curiosity, how would you rate his usage of the Crocs? Was he taking the right blocks and using him more as a roadblock that prehends our tail a bit more. It's a bit difficult to see with the numbers. So would you, would you think he was doing pretty well with it? Yeah, I think the croc was doing croc was doing all right. He wasn't standout player. There was no the movement up skink was the standout player for this team. Yeah. Um yeah. one thing I will say about the croc though, I think Leon thinks that the croc is really stupid and not bonehead. Right. <laughs> Yeah, no, the Crocs is bonehead. Leon, you don't have to babysit him. <laughs> yeah, bonehead slightly different to bonehead slightly different to really stupid. So I think yeah, I, he always brings a skink near to the Croc when he's trying that. That might be a strategy thing. It might just be because he's getting bonehead and really stupid mixed up yeah. in the moment. So you've you've got uh, two plus on bonehead no matter what across the board. It's mm. Either people will say it's either the, the, the least worst or the second least worst of the nega traits. Really stupid being the worst one. I think it is the I think it is the least stupid. The least worst. The least worst. Um, yeah, yeah. Foul appearance is about what you're expecting. Um, in anything else, nothing is really surprising there. Dodge rates are exactly is about what you're expecting. Huzzah, Leon, you finally got a decent dodge. Um, <laughs> let's look at his bash dice. Oh, 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 God. When you're, get, it... when you're getting more skulls than you are pushes, you know you've had a bad day. Yeah, he's got two double skulls just on the first page, and of course, the, the, until he can get some block on that team, both downs and skulls are, yeah. The saving grace, though, is there is quite a lot of defensive numbers on that team as well. Three, yeah. when your pushes are that low, like, what on earth is happening? Uh, <laughs> let's just say that's not within the bell curve, guys. No, not at all. That's not what you should be expecting when you're playing no, Love Ball. If you had better dice early on, this game could have ended very differently. But hey, you know, when you I, get blocked. I think it's know. more importantly, he didn't have. His dice weren't good or bad, they were just not middling. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, let's look at the fridge raiders. Their block dice. Sorry, not their block dice. Their push. Their edge dice. Um, slightly better than average. 
um, if you're worried about ones. But that's a lot of threes, which may be good, may be bad. Third, quite a lot of dodges. That's slightly lower than average dodge rate, but uh, you can't really complain too much. Uh, KOs are within reason. Pickups are within reason. Are within standard deviation. Um, nothing out. Nothing on toward there. What about his block dice? Um, quite a lot of blocks. Quite a lot. Of quite a lot of both downs. But that kind of favours him because he's got um, a lot more block. A lot more blocker and wrestle. Uh, but if you look at that first page, that's a lot of skulls and a lot of uh, yeah. blocks. Not not many but pushes. I have it quickly just scanned through the uh, distribution. Though he's not actually got that bad. He's got a mm. skull here and a double skull later on, but all the skulls are paired up with with mm. something. It all seems to be fine, fine dice, fine performance. Just not getting the injuries, but that's just sound to dice there. Uh, just to hammer in one point, I will say, looking because I'm flipping through all the dice rolls they have made here, just to re-emphasize an earlier point, Matt did one one dice block that entire game. One, folks, just one. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> all right then. Uh, let's look at the SPP. Uh, uh, crocodile one's got five SP. Crocodile and alligator got three. I'm pretty sure neither of them got a level up. Ectopia cord has got five. Jerry the Goat Chris and Bighorn got two and Bighorn Vader got Vader. Bighorn Vader got three. Um I let's check Ectopia Cordis because that might be a level up cup, but I don't think that's Sorry. end level up. Who are we going to first? Matt. 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 Uh Matt did cool, cool, cool. Matt did get a level up with Ectopia Cordis and that is now a wrestle dirty player. You don't really want to get level ups on your your dirty player rotters, do you? No, uh, he's got his beast back. I mean, he he's he's ready to continue the season now. I mean, mm. yeah, you, you're you're still a bit of a minor favourite, Matt. Don't take what I'm saying. You know, I think you're, I think he's still got this personally. But um, yeah, yeah, he needs to get a few wins in now. I think. I, I think I think I think you're still in position at least to get playoffs here. Uh, yeah. Let's look at Leon's team. Uh, pretty sure there's no level ups, but let's have a look at it anyway. Um, oh no, sure feet on crocodile and alligator. Yeah, well, that's a good skill choice. I mm -hmm. mean, you know, he did. Uh, so he did. Gonna... Um, he would have scored earlier, but he did fail at GFI. So he used a team reroll to reroll the GFI, and he definitely said would have gone for the other GFI if he could have, but he didn't want to risk not scoring with another one. So I think, yeah, Shawfeet's sure, definitely a good choice there. And, and the, you know, he'll get a sprint on that. So what I was going to advise you to do, Leon, is try to find videos of people manipulating the pushes at the beginning to push their guys over the line. I have never mastered it. It's really, really tricky thing to learn. But if you can learn it, he's a one-turn uh, touchdown. He's got his other re-roll. So you're now in a good position that if your skinks level up and get rubbish, sack one, maybe get a 12th one on the bench isn't a, a, a terrible idea. But yeah, yeah, he, he, he's he he's got a couple of sauruses that could potentially get blocked as well. So he, he's getting there. I would do what Phil did last year. Um, Phil didn't get to play, uh, didn't hire um, when his stunty, his rehire of stunty players, giving more opportunity for his big guys that they get to get the SVP. So I wouldn't yeah. hire any more skinks until you get another guy with block at least. Yeah, I know he get yeah, completely viable, and in the meantime, you know these two with three, they level up, they don't get anything special. You've got the money to just get rid of them, get another one in, and try mm. to get a decent. Whatever, if you can get that the skinks right, you only need four. Yeah, let's get to the next game. Uh, keep on schedule. Your game, Alistair, tell me. Oh, how God is this only a draw? This was a... So every time I ever play Liam... He like, thinks it's a game? No, it's not. Well, I don't want to say no to <laughs> that, but he just breaks armor, breaks armor, KO, break armor injury, break armor, KO, 
it was a nightmare. And I was actually at a point where I was like, I'm sick of this. I'm sick of this game. Because <laughs> even oh, I get it sometimes. <laughs> I'm completely sick of this bullshit. I, I, I have to admit, at the time, I did have a bit of carry-on going on behind me with um, home things. But that was fine. It's, you know, But I have to say, I did sort of get my head back into the game by the end of the second half and almost stopped him from scoring but i just i can't i couldn't stop the drive i i i didn't you know he he, he injured one of the lines off with a minus av who's now being sacked was it a minus edge sorry he's now being sacked and it was just an absolute nightmare but that was nothing just screwing with us you know i would imagine by half time uh, Liam was feeling. I mean, that was that was the first half basically. Liam just smashed through all my blooming players, and just just every time he hit, they, a player went off or got stunned. Like every time, <laughs> he made me cry. And then Nuffle just turned around and went, "Right, it's your uh, half now. Liam, now it's your turn." And I killed one of his rights. And I just was. I mean, I had a bit of a. So in the second half, I'd received the ball, and. Um, <clears throat> I didn't do it as well as Jay, uh, Rob does later on in, in his game, um, but I was able to keep the ball carrier away from from getting blitzed until I could sort of smash through. Um, and yeah, I was able to smash him through. I mean, it was, it was the exact reverse of the, of the first half almost. You know, I the Nuffle just just turned the dice around. <laughs> it was crazy. And so yeah, and then I thought, well, because I'm only. Uh, moving six and it took me a few turns to be able to break through I, I went more for a stall play at the end and I just went for the draw mm. so it, 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 I would say that that tie uh, I think Liam would agree with me that tie came down to the dice we would we were diced both of us got diced in, that, in, in me in the first half him in the but uh, so by the end of the second half I was a bit more back in the game again going all right I'm not going to quit <laughs> Oh, well, I would have done anyway. Yeah. Okay. So you basically uh, so, yeah. intentionally made it a one-one because you really could, you didn't, you weren't convinced you could score the second, and you were worried he'd score the second. Yeah, I mean there was no. By the time I was up into a position where I could have scored, there would have been three turns left for me to get the ball and mm. attempt to score, and it would have been it's possible. But the Zons aren't really fast enough to do that, are they? Uh, no. Movement six across the board. I mean they're not they're faster than dwarves, but not by much. Mm. Let's look at statistics. Uh, ball possession, uh, relatively even, about a turn in it, either way. Um, lots of bashes. Those are dwarf numbers of blocks succeeded for Liam. That's some good numbers yeah. there. Um, though you do actually seem to have the better of the injuries. So despite yeah. what you're saying, you do seem to have the Overall. better of the injuries. I see, I don't understand that because he definitely injured a player. Because I know that because I fired them. Was it a dog from a dodge though? Was it from a failed dodge though? Oh, maybe it was. Because sure that, it was the KOs block. inflicted are only from um, di block dice that he's rolled. Um, I thought it was from a block. Oh, maybe. Uh, yeah, I thought it was from a block. I might be wrong. Yeah. Uh, let's have a look at the rest. Running yards. You've got more running yards. But obviously, as you said, you ran the length of the pitch. Um, block sustained. Yeah, we can see blah, blah, blah. To dice rolls. Uh, we've got Lustre Headhunters. Those dice are nice and even until you get to those sixes. That, that, that sums up, I think that's about what I was saying. I had bad dice first half, better dice second mm. half. 46% armor. That's not good. I'm pretty sure you are. Ex you want successes on that one. Um, so, 46% armor. Oh, wait, no, considering yours, that's... Probably within standard deviation, you're probably looking at 16 14 the other way is actually about what you should be expecting. So, kind of within standard deviation there. Injuries, uh, yeah, crazy, but that was all mostly in the second half as well. That was all mm. in one half. <laughs> so, yeah, it's like you have a um, dice relatively even for one for most of the game, and then final two turns you just roll nothing but skulls and ones. Um, yeah. let's look at your block dice. Um, you can consider yourself a little bit unlucky, but I presume you have a lot of block still. Oh, God, yeah. Yeah, yeah so yeah, you're fine. You're fine. Slightly like un unlucky in the round of both downs, but again, that doesn't matter. Skulls are with exactly where you expect them. Not many pals, but the skulls make up for that. The both downs make up for that. 
Um, and if we look at Liam's dice, uh, his D6s, also also slightly higher than expecting on the edge dice. Lots of twenty, lot lots of sixes. Um, yeah. Dodges failed more than succeed, but I think they're more of an edge two team, aren't they? Uh, yeah, but he has pinnacle players like the werewolves and the ghouls. I mean, mm. the ghouls are edge three with dodge, only has one. And, yeah, yeah. So he's probably so he's probably unlucky, assuming that he's dodging with his edge three players as opposed to his edge two right players. players. Uh, I don't think, I from memory, he dodged with anything, but maybe go wide dodging with him. So I think he did it. And those go GFIs are looking pretty damn awful. Yeah. And that's not like that's not good. That's not good. Though it seems all those ones seem to be pretty pinnacle. Uh, yeah, thinking about it, relative to the twos, that's a lot of ones. Oh, I meant to mention as well. He did go juice, but he took a werewolf tackle, which was I said to ask the right choice. That is yeah. a very good choice. Yeah, so, uh, so, so some of these stumbles, and he was using it properly. So, so looking at the block dice, uh, that's a lot of dice rolled. That's a lot of dice. That's actually about where you're expecting, to be honest. Slightly higher than average both downs, uh, to be, but it's all within standard deviation there, I think. Yeah, and he was actually blocking with the right players. I mean, if you scroll through, you see like he's got a couple of both downs. He's not re-rolling because he hit with players with block. He hasn't got every player with blocks. So he was using the whites correctly and all mm -hmm. that sort of stuff. Yeah. Um, looking at let's look at SPP. Uh, Boris Johnson gets three. NHS gets five. You get a lot, but you don't name your players too, Alistair. So, God help me. <laughs> Sorry, I will from now on. Hey, I call them the the Silano sisters or whatever they're called. They're both the Ad Four players <laughs> and have the same surname. So it's like, yeah. yeah. Oh well. I, if anybody dies, I'll rename. Them. Did you get any level ups? I don't think I did. No. All right. Well, let's look at NHS and Boris Johnson then. Um, let's see. Goonies, Goonies. I think you're up here. There you are. NHS got five. Uh, that means nothing new because guard's already a thing. And Boris Johnson got three. So Boris Johnson didn't get a level up because Boris Johnson was already a dodged werewolf. Do werewolves have access to dodge on a single or is it a double? Yeah, they have access to general and agility. So he gets no strength access mm. for uh, some of the other skills. But he That's lost scary a lot uh, I mean, he, he has had a pretty rough season in terms of casualties. He replaced the goal. I wasn't sure he would replace the goal, but he has. That's a wise move there. To remain uh, there. The goal is remaining on the pit, on the team, it seems. Hopefully, you know. Uh, but obviously, I think hopefully the next step will be to try to save up for the for, for another werewolf. I think the, maybe another white, probably, first. Yeah, I don't, yeah. That's, yeah, probably the white for the liability for having mm. the block there. That's probably a smart move. Yeah, I think that white needs to get another level up because I definitely can see Mighty Blow being useful on Michael Gove. Yeah. Um, well, uh, you've got no play at level ups, but we'll look at your team anyway. Um, where are you? There you are. Yeah, I mean, I had to replace the line with the line. Yeah. I'm not taking a second catcher. I'm finding it hard to work this one in the one I've got into into the current game, but, but I'll stick with it for a bit. But you've yeah, got. You, you've got 40k of free bloat, considering that you're not spending that. I suspect you're saving up for a stadium, aren't you? Upgrade. I want the. I've got to be the first team to get a level stadium, unless any of you can beat me to it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I want a big stadium. You can all keep your little backwaters. <laughs> uh, mine's, a, mine's a level two stadium now. That's uh, right. I think. I think it's reasonable. To, to, to assume you might get to level three because it's something you can sink your money into when you've got like loads of it and what else are you going to do? You might, if you're going to just buy cheerleaders and coach mm. assistants, sack them, you might as well just get the next level up stadium, you know. Well, you might as well nab a couple of cheerleaders and coaches, considering if you're sometimes, but yeah, you're, you're, you're set, you're set, you're absolutely mindset on it. Yeah, uh, yeah, no, I, that's but obviously not to the point where I won't replace players. players yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, well, we're looking at that. What do you reckon? Your two new linemen, line women, are they going to probably get wrestled? Do you reckon they're going to also get blocked? I think. Uh, well, 
I've got what I'm going to want. Yeah, she'll probably be another wrestle player. Mm. I think I need to get two wrestle. I haven't been able to use the wrestle players for what I would want to use them for, but I, I think having two mm. is definitely the way forward. I've got tons of block everywhere else. Yeah, and your catcher hasn't got a level up yet. Like, no, well, the thing is, she picked up the ball. I went to throw it and then rolled a one and fumbled it. So, you know, <laughs> that, that, that summed up the first half. Yeah. You know, the last thing that happened. So I was like, oh, well, you know, it's, yep. it's fun. Nuffles. Nuffles a cruel bitch. That's uh, right. Let's get, to, cool. let's get to the final game. Rolling and route versus idea. Probably, probably in the build-up, probably the game of the, of the half. I would suspect, because if we were thinking out beforehand, this is probably what we thought the game of the game of the round would be. Yeah. Did you watch it? I didn't watch it though. Yeah, it it was it was a a really good game. Uh, so the Skaven received the ball, and so uh, Rob uh, has run it back, and he keeps he he keeps his line where it is. He doesn't try and move them about and that and he forces the chaos towards to come down to him which is a kind of a smart move because mm. obviously if they're in his second half if he can get away from them he's away you know yeah so but um then he runs the, rob runs the ball carrier up but he fails a quick pass i mean we're talking a two plus three roll one and one he does, this is a theme for the rats, this game. <laughs> I have a question. I have a question. Was it yes. uh, Slippery Simon making that pass? Because he did say he wanted to. He was inspired by my Peyton Manning analogy. Yeah, I think it was. I think it was. I mean, um, it, it wasn't disastrous. Uh, I think that's why he was doing what he was doing. Actually, now you said that, uh, mm. it was still a good move, regardless. It did. Fall Chaos to come to him. I think he was trying to screen off Slippery Simon so he could get the pass. Yeah, that makes sense now in that context. Mm. Um, but the Chaos Dwarves, I mean, they can break through a little bit, but they can't really get round to, to get to the ball. Mm -hmm. So it's it's not a disaster for the Rats. So, of course, Slippery Simon then picks the ball up, leaps over the Chaos Dwarf line, and pelts it up the pitch. I be mean, this this is this is determination to get the star player points on Slippery Simon. So I don't know if Rob knew he could be blitzed and took the risk, or whether he just missed it in his determination. Uh, he can maybe tell us in the comments on are that because you, are you suggesting that Rob Top miscalculated? It happens, you know. <laughs> he gets if he if he gets so focused on something like. Burningly focused, it can it, it, it can it doesn't happen often, but but yeah, it can happen. But I could I mean, he maybe he saw it equal chance. He he knew the, the risk and he would decided to do it anyway. You know, mm. uh, but unfortunately for him, slippery Simon gets blitzed by the by a bull centaur, is injured on a badly hurt on like turn three and sent off the pitch. <laughs> Oh dear! So I don't think what you think is going to happen. I think Slippery Simon's just going to be injured, but just it's going to be like one star player point away. I think this is going to be beautiful. It's, it's beautiful, isn't it? Hilarious. And you could you could just see that he's like, do I risk using the apocryphery now? He did. You know? He did in the game against me. He did apo it beforehand. He didn't apo. He didn't apo it beforehand. Yeah. So did he apo? But I don't think he would have it. No, he didn't apo it. I mean, but I think I think he was considering it. But I don't think he didn't. I mean, it was a smart move not to do it. I mean, that that's that's where you just have to look. If somebody else dies or slippery Simon gets a, a worse hit, you don't want that. So it's the right choice not to apo that badly hurt. It was only you know it was a badly hurt. So. Mm. Uh, so he's trying to break through because you know he's he's run the ball so far up the other half. He hasn't really got anybody else in that half in support because it was a real leap over and run it up. Um, so he, he, he he's he, he's not quite able to break through enough, and then the Mino kills Angry Liam, the unleveled up blitzer. Okay. Um, I don't. He did. Did he? He didn't apo that. 
he just accepted it, which is, makes sense. No star player point. He got far more important players, which we'll get to. Uh, the ball centaur picks up the ball and runs forward. At this point, I think, you know, that's good, Daniel. You, you experiment with the ball centaurs and ball handling and see what you think about it. I and mean, he didn't have a choice, really, but he, he does that. Um, and again, he still he's able to hold the skaven off so they can't quite break, break through it. So he runs the ball. Uh, centaur further down the pitch but everybody forgets about Angry Joe Angry Joe so while oh, all this dear. is going on Angry Joe is smashing into the other players and injuring them well Angry Joe does that he's got claws, Angry he's got piling on, he's got a mighty blow he's a scary player I understand you can't take your eyes off Slippery Simon, but because everyone is so focused on Slippery Simon, you cannot forget about Angry. Angry Joe won this team their final. I think uh, Matt still has nightmares about that game. <laughs> Yo, Angry Joe single-handedly cleared an orc team. You know, and I'm not even exaggerating. Angry Joe is not a player that you can just you got to know where he is at all times. Mm. Um, it, it was just insane. I mean, um, so the ball carrier does score, and then uh, they kick off again. Angry Joe gets another injury. Uh, he, uh, he, Rob picks up the ball with the, with the gutter, because obviously he's receiving at this point. Uh, he passes the ball to another ball carry now uh, when i was looking at how he was doing it i thought he was gonna line up the unleveled up gutter to, to get some star player points and when he didn't i looked at yeah he gave it to a gutter that's three star player points away from leveling up uh there chaos dwarves are able to sort of um it does a blitz but on the ball carrier but it's only a push uh but he's got a few tackle zones down that uh the skaven are able to um maneuver it enough so the ball carrier can blitz and runs in and, and he, they go into the second half uh, one all uh, <laughs> at the second half so get this the chaos doors are down four injured players that's yeah. angry joe all angry maybe you regret me if i'm wrong rob but maybe one wasn't but from my memory all four all angry joe uh angry joe's gonna get the top spot by the way i see angry joe <laughs> at this rate getting to be the one that gets the full star player points before Slippery Simon, because he's nearly there as well. Um, the Raps are down two injured players, uh, but he has two reserves. Mm. So, I mean, the Chaos Dwarves are down four players, ostensibly, for the entire game. I mean, then the second half starts off with another Angry Joe piling on injury. <laughs> oh, no. A fifth Dwarf is now off. Uh but, you know, uh, Daniel gets the ball. Um, he, he actually makes pretty good use. I mean, Daniel is, is a definitely an up-and-coming coach. He's a lot better, obviously, than his first season, and he's putting the, what he's got left to pretty good use, uh, as you probably see from the scoreline, you know. Um, so he gets it basically as far down. He has to form a fairly tight cage at the line of scrimmage. He doesn't have a whole choice here but that does allow uh the rats to put players into the right position that he can chain push the ball carrier out into the edges he blitzes the ball carrier with angry joe he gets a uh, double push but he re-rolls it which is he's trying to get the ball carrier down i completely understood that but he gets a skull and a both down and the ball carrier had blocks so they're just smacking each other like that they gave each other uh, a kiss that's it, you know. And um, uh, lots of bit of backwards and forwarding. Uh, the, the, the Chaos Dwarves managed to kill uh, Line Rat dead. Um, Angry Joe uh, the, actually then smashes into the ball carrier and the ball gets off. Uh, a gutter runner does a four plus pickup but fails a short pass. So I think at this point, I, I wasn't sure. I, I thought personally he should have dodged that gut runner out, maybe and been tempted to pass, but um, it, it was probably a reason for that. Um, so the Chaos Dwarves are able to get tackle zones onto the ball. Uh, the the, the get, Skaven get a gut runner in. Uh, 
Rob decides that Angry Joe hasn't killed enough players through uh, hitting them, so he fouls with him. This is quite near the end of the game, and he gets sent off. <laughs> I think he likes to be protectionism yeah. there, to be honest. Just get him yeah. off the pitch, get him out of the way, so he doesn't get killed. Potentially, yeah. Uh, he, he wasn't. I mean, he was. He was clear away for a touchdown by this point. He'd run up, and uh, you know, he scores on turn fifteen. So I thought, if uh, so I thought he was going to stall it out. So maybe he can say in the comments what, what he was thinking. Because I thought, well, if you go, you, at that point, you, if you if you're going to go for another touchdown with slippery Simon, he's one turner off the pitch. I would have scored in turn 14, giving me two turns. Uh, there's, to two, go for there, it. there's two. There's two things that can be lucky: a blitz or a riot that can get you. True. True. I mean, but yeah, no. I mean, whatever. It didn't, didn't affect his game. He still got the touchdown in. Uh, like in the first, uh, then in the um, last kickoff, they both have one turn left. Um, yeah, and Rat Twelve gets injured at the end, but but nothing much else happens. So yeah. there was a game that could have gone either way at, at points in it. You know, second I mean, half it seemed to be all one way traffic, but yeah, the first half could have been interesting. Yeah, I mean, I mean, but. Uh, Daniel was able to, to, to hold off the rats enough in that second half. I mean, it, oh. it, he had lost enough players, he could have lost this four. You mm. know. Let's look at uh, statistics. Um, ball possession, uh, slightly more uh, for the Chorps than the rats. Lots of occupation in the opponent's half, which is obviously something that both teams would have wanted. Uh, both teams making one successful pass. It's nice when the Chorps make a pass play. That's right. <laughs> uh, blocks about even. I suspect 90% of the dodgy blocks came from Angry Joe on the rats. Um, that's a lot of injuries and KOs and uh, kills inflicted by Daniel. That's a lot yeah. of that's a lot of damage. Um, yeah, that's on both sides as well. Mm. You know, it's the real winner. The real winners of this game are myself and Willem. I think. Okay. Uh, the, if we look at the dice rolls, uh, the rats, uh, that's a lot of sixes and that's a lot of fives. Yeah. I, he was, he failed all, he failed an awful lot of his pass rolls, but yeah, yeah he did, he, he did, he, he was dodging like you expect them, like gut runners to dodge. Yeah. Pa them. Passing doing bad, but that's a lot of sixes. That's just a lot of sixes. Wherever they are, that's a lot of sixes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, KOs are within standard deviation because uh, that's a small sample size, so 40% is about what you're expecting. Going for it is so about what you're expecting. Um, leaps, 100%, you can't complain with that. Uh, jump ups, about what you're expecting. Nothing to run toward there. Block dice, um, not many skulls, that's very nice. That's a real yeah. <laughs> That's a. <laughs> that's really nice. <laughs> Oh dear, unlucky, unlucky there for um, Daniel. Uh, but even if those skull got more skulls, I suspected they would have been paired up. So you really are not getting much there. Uh, we look at the IDF. Um, that's a lot of dice rolls for a, a twelve team, to be honest. Um, mainly though, they're probably through injuries, to be honest. Um, lots of yeah. twos. Lots of ones, which is a bit of a shame, but a lot of fives as well. So it's, um, it's a bit of a take with one, give with the other. You're probably looking about 24 as the average uh, for what you're expecting on those dice. If we look at the blocks, um, those dice are about what you're expecting. A lot of stumbles, which is kind of okay for you um, because. Some players have dodged, but of course some players have tackled. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, takes with, takes with one, gives with another. Really uh, let's have a look at the SPP. SPP focused on a couple of players for Roland Rat, while IDF got a nice spread. Uh, so, Slippery Snake gets six, and so does Slippery Sam, and Angry Joe gets eight. So that's four injuries from uh, yeah. him. <laughs> So like, okay, so one of those injuries was somebody else. So yeah, yeah. slippery Pretty snake, cool. slippery Simon, and angry Joe. I suspect there's no level ups there, uh, but 
the Slippery Snake uh, did get a level up, but Slippery Snake's now got Strip Ball. Slippery Sam already had Strip Ball, so not a level up for him. And Angry Joe doesn't get a level up because Angry Joe is glorious and scary. He is, but he's, he's Ed, but he is, you know, he's on his way to being level seven. I, mean, I, I wouldn't level up the other gut, the gut, these two gutter runners, the way that he's done it. But, but you know. Mm. He knows what he's doing. Oh, it's pointless, isn't it? You know, it's, it's, yeah, he knows it's what he's doing. Fine. So, you know. a lot of love SPP for Daniel. Daniel doesn't generally wait to hit before he levels up his players, but I don't think he has this time. Benjamin Netanyahu got five. He has not got a level up. Um, I think someone got... I think Ariel Sharon... Yeah, two players now have standing stand firm. Stand firm. Those yeah, two that's there. not a bad choice. I mean, don't, they don't have access to mutation on a single, so. Mm. Yeah, I mean, I don't know at this. I mean, obviously you can wait till the others level up, but if you don't get at least two of them getting claw, you want to think about sacking and recycling until yeah. you get a couple of chaos tools where you do get the doubles. But at the moment, you know, you can wait for for the other three to catch up. Yeah. See what happens. Chaucer Killers. That team is looking like it's going to kill people. Yes. Um, unfortunately for all, despite getting all those injuries, they're all badly hurt. Yes. Not good enough. <laughs> Not good enough, Rob. Not good enough. Uh, let's look at the leaderboard. Let's look at the leaderboard before we look at the schedule. Yeah. Uh, I'm still at the top. It's nice to see Chris about where he belongs. Because I reckon Chris is going to be getting into the playoffs, especially with that team, especially with such height to the TV. Yeah. Um, Fridge Raiders, yeah, they could be doing better, but Leon's played well. I can't remember some of his other games, um, but he won against Ken. Did he draw against you or did he lose to you? Cause I, know I have played. not. I play Leon next. No, no, no. no I play Ken next. No, 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 no. Did you play, when you played Matt? Did you draw or lose to him? I think we drew. Okay. I don't know. I'll quickly check it. Uh, yeah, we drew. We so drew yeah. one all. Yeah, I wonder who that. I can't remember who that loss was against. Um, Barmy Army is uh, still doing well. That draw against Leon is is the only thing that's keeping him in second place. He uh, lost against Barry. Yeah, uh, he lost to Barry. Well, yeah. that's a good thing for Barry. Barry's un Barry's only winners against Matt. Slightly behind him. A draw against someone, I can't remember who. Ken's only win was against uh, Leon, I remember that. But Leon's got three draws against three of the good three of the good guys. He's got a draw against Phil, he got a draw against um, uh, Matt. And I can't remember who his third draw was against, but it was against someone that he, that he probably is happy with the draw with. Um, Willem needs to get some points, but if he's, as you said, if he needs to just not take those one dice. Yeah, I yeah, relax with it. But, you know, the, 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 the team is developing, it's getting there. I mean, mm. they're, they're, yeah. It's still anyone's game, though I think I'm three out of four for my predictions for who's going to get to the finals. Yeah, I think. Uh, because I, think... I I predicted second to, people that are currently in second to fifth to be the top four. I didn't predict myself to get to top four. But mind you, I have played a bunch of most of the teams I played have been low TV teams. My, my first real challenge, other than Rob Top, is going to be next week. Yeah, well, you're far too modest as well. Sometimes I mean, you're you're I mean, I put top right way. You I have <laughs> like... I, I should play myself down. I should play myself down. It's only polite to. Um, yeah, but yeah, you're probably about where you, do you, how do you reckon you're doing? To be. Yeah, about where you deserve um, to be. Yeah, I mean they're, they're they're struggling a little bit. I mean they you know they had a tough match with the Chaos Dwarves. I mean uh, I wasn't expecting them to do great things this season, considering the other teams that are in there. But uh, I'm all right. I'm happy with where I am. Mm. I mean as long as they survive. Um, but I didn't want to take them out. When I saw the team spread, I think that's cheating in a way. You know, oh, well, this is 
a great season for them, so I'll put someone else in. I mean, if you have people do it, that's fine. But I, I said I'd put the Amazons in, so I put them in. Hmm. Um, Let's yeah. go to the schedule. Next week's schedule. Uh, I'm going to lead us on predictions since I've already wrote my predictions down. Fly the Lizards versus Freddy Nightmares. I think Leon's finally got to get his first win. And I'd be disappointed if he doesn't. Yeah, you can do this, Leon. I mean, no offence to you either, Barry, but your team is a bit still worse for wear. Mm. Whereas Leon's team is actually being able to develop. I mean, he, he's not had any... Yeah, I, I'd put this... I say 2-0. 2-0, yeah. You <laughs> two say 2-0 too? Yeah, definitely. All right, then. Next game, uh, Last Red Hunters versus Dude, Where's My Chameleon? Mm, I, I, I always have faith in Ken, and he's shown signs against Phil of all people that he's not going to that he can score against some of these tougher teams you've got a lot of tackle but it's certainly not as much as chores so I reckon you're going to win but 2-1 yeah I was going to say 2-1 to me <laughs> I think he'll at least score one uh, and it's sort of similar I've got so much block and dodge on my team he he's going to struggle with that mm. now we've got Rowan Rap versus the Leviathans. Uh, 5 0 to the Leviathans. There you go, Willem. 5 0. Let's down. 5 0 uh, to the Leviathans. Legitimately. Let's down, Willem. You're say, you're, no. yeah, I'm, saying, I'm saying, quite obviously, 4 1 to Rowan Rap. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll try to be a bit different. I'm not just copying you, just you're saying the sort of similar things to me, and I'll, I'll, I'll go 3 1. Okay, just because I went 4. Just because I said That's 4 right. first. Yeah. Okay. As requested as the IDF, uh, as Rob Top put it, the game or one of the two games of the week. I think I've got this, and I've got a strategy in mind, and I think it might be two 0 Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna put a bit of faith in into Daniel. I think uh, I, I'll give him a, a two or draw. Okay. In this. But if he brings his A game, you need to bring your A game, Daniel, because Callum's like the best elf coach in the league. But you've got the tackle and the mighty blow and all of that. You could beat him. You could you could beat him. But I'll, I'll hedge the bets and say two. All. And then we got Snobby Snobs versus Grabbing by the Ghoulies. Uh, I think this might be the time where Liam shows his worth because this team hasn't been doing that well this season. Uh, I think. This might be, uh, just by how his recent performance is, this might be the chance where the Goodies get um, themselves up out of the bottom three. I'm going to yeah. say they win 2-1. Yeah, I mean, you've but had Chris a could season. easily, easily correct us on that. Oh, absolutely. I, Liam, you've had, you know, you, you, you haven't had the... the the dice have gone against you a bit up to now. He's lost pinnacle players, and even the last game, another dead white. You know, mm. it hasn't been good, but yeah, you could beat that. But I'm going to go against. The TV difference the, is massive. I, I, I think he's going to find the snobs hard, quite hard to beat. I know he's got inducements, so I'm going to give it a two-one, no, three-one to the snobs. I think. Three-one to the snobs. Don't, yeah, don't let that discourage you though. And. <laughs> The other game of the the half, the other game of the yeah, week. Give... Two nil to the Barney Army. Okay, okay, I'm gonna go one nil. <laughs> yeah, I think I um I think the map uh, again. I sound like I'm being really hard on that. This this recap, uh, Matt, it, it, it's um still needs to still need to get some pinnacle skills down. Um, He's got his two, but he does. He has his new beast, but that's not really bothered the Chaos Swords very much. And he, you know, he's against a team with an awful lot of block and mighty blow and a couple of claw players. It, it, it's going to be tough. But hey, Matt can pull this out. He, I mean, obviously, Matt, Matt, you have every chance of winning. Matt uh, always we, plays with a level head, so I think that's why I think it's only going to be one nil. He's not. He's yeah. not going to play. He's not going to do anything ridiculous. It's going to be. This is going to be a bash first and a foul first. Both people are going to... Oh, it's going to be lots of... The winners are going to be those who are playing these two next week. A Barmy Army can't make any mistakes. Any mistakes and you might you throw in the game away against Matt. Mm. I mean, Matt play, always plays a fairly steady game. Yeah. 
uh, that's it for us this week, I think. Yeah, uh, until next week. Yeah. Nothing bless. See you guys next week. Bye.